interested in getting rid of the spike protein and helping our bodies clear it because because it's not a natural protein our bodies don't actually have a mechanism to clear it and if they had done some pharmacokinetic studies they would have seen that that was the case um, so we have to denature the spike protein before our, our livers can clear it and we pee it out and um, an Italian group called the Zero Spike group have uh, have developed something called augmented NAC. So they found that ordinary NAC did denature maybe 2%, 10% erratically of the spike protein and then the liver could start clearing it. But if they did some quantum physics on it and they made sure that every single subatomic particle of that NAC had that potential and was working optimally, 99.8% of the spike protein that's extracellular can be denatured, which is incredible. So people can people can take one three times a day uh, for three months, and that's they've shown that clears out the backlog of what we've produced over the last three years, two years. Um, and then one a month, or sorry, one a day, one a day thereafter, because uh, we don't know how long the messenger RNA will stay in our cells producing this stuff. And we think in some cases it changes the DNA. There is that, you know, until we know how to mend that, we need to clear it out as it's made. Um, yeah. And certainly the immunosuppression that the spike protein causes is greatly improved by people going on this because we know the pathophysiology of the spike protein, uh, which I'm very happy to run over quickly. Um, mm. It causes, okay, so it causes uh, the T lymphocytes to merge together and become useless and to become zombie cells. So that's something called syncytia. So instead of being separate, they become like a blancmange, and like that, they mm. can't work. Now, T lymphocytes are a super important part of our immune system that um, detects and destroys abnormal cells. So if a cell has got a virus in it or bacteria in it, or has got precancerous properties, the T lymphocytes will destroy it. But if they are useless, then they can't work. You are immunosuppressed. So people are succumbing to much more in the way of infections. So when I was a GP, um, we used to see one case, I used to see one case of shingles a year. Um, and it would be an elderly immunosuppressed person. And some of my friends who are working in general practice are seeing two or three cases a day in young people now. Mm -hmm. So that's because they're immunosuppressed. So it causes immunosuppression. It can form little filaments in the blood, the neutrophil elastase in the blood and the um, amyloid beta of the spike protein can will uh, form filaments can form filaments and these are abnormal and we've never seen the likes of them before and also it can cause blood clotting so we're seeing more people with heart attacks strokes pulmonary emboli even young people i have a 34 year old friend who suddenly had a massive heart attack while she was on holiday and has had to have triple bypass surgery because he it had formed clots in three of his main coronary arteries he's 34 previously fit and healthy I have another friend in his 50s who was who runs every day and is very slim, very, very particular about his food and everything. And he had a massive heart attack out of the blue, um, you know, absolutely terrible. And it's caused by this. We, we believe it's caused by this. It also causes inflammation of the lining of the arteries and myocarditis and pericarditis. Now, this inflammation um, is caused because the spike protein has a real affinity for the mast cells that line the lining of the arteries and causes inflammation. So it can cause aneurysms because the inflammation just rips it apart. Uh, so we've got aneurysms. Um, a friend of my son's, a 32-year-old friend of my son's, she suddenly had an aneurysm and then a stroke from the clot that had formed over the aneurysm. She's a fit, healthy girl, age 32. Um, and um, yeah, so and if it causes these clots in the eyes, we've got a lot of patients with blindness. I've got three patients who one who went blind in two eyes and two who've gone blind in one eye, um, you know, sort of a year after having the vaccine. But no other cause can be found for these conditions, you know. And the lady who went blind in both eyes, it was two days after the first dose. Um, and uh, and then so it does all of that. Now, 
Basel, a recent study from Basel, they looked at 777 people, they checked them for, they had no comorbidities, they were fit and healthy, they checked them for um, myocarditis before they had any doses, they had I think two doses and then they checked them again and one in 35 people had myocarditis, some of which was subclinical, so they had no idea they had it and if you have myocarditis you're not supposed to exercise. You're supposed to wait until it settles and get better. And that could be why we're seeing sudden death in a lot of athletes, because they don't realize they've got it and they're exercising and then, you know, their hearts stop. Um, we expect they're anticipating 50 percent of those people with myocarditis to die in the next five years. So that's one in 70 people who've been vaccinated could die in the next five years from that. I mean, this is. A tragedy. This is awful. Yeah. And, the, you know, and then it, it upregulates 17 cancer-causing genes and it downregulates three cancer-protective genes. So the P53, the BRCA1 and the PRB gene, the P53 gene is like the uh, super chief quality control gene. And when a gene, when a cell replicates, the P53 checks it quickly to make sure everything is in order. And if it is, it passes it. And if it isn't, it presses the destroy button. And that's how it we stop getting can it stops us getting cancer. But if that's been switched off by the spike protein, then we're going to see an increase in cancers, which we certainly mm. are. We're seeing yeah. a massive in America, a ten percent increase in cancers apparently, um, and in this uh, and in this country and in the. Uh, we're seeing more recurrences as well. So 10% doesn't even include the people coming out of remission. And Professor um, uh, Dal Gleish in London, he's an oncologist who's come out and said, he tells all his patients in remission, please do not have the, the you know, you don't want this spike protein in your body because you're. I'm seeing so many of my patients who've been fine for 20 years suddenly getting recurrences. So um, that's really bad. And then... The lipid nanoparticle, which was the envelope around the, the messenger RNA in some of the vaccines, not in all of them, that can pass into the through the blood brain barrier. And we are seeing an increase in dementia, MS, ALS, um, CJD and Parkinson's, even in some young people. So we have to get the spike protein out of our bodies and using the augmented NAC is really, really helpful.